What is good Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video and in this one I want to break down what's going on with Tesla stock, what's going on with the overall market, what's happening with SPY, NVIDIA, the QQQ and a couple of other tickers, and what's happening with all this news affecting the markets for tomorrow as we have more data coming out. But before I break anything down about all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed up to five free stocks. The offer ends in just about 11 days, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market. We had a crazy day on Tesla today as we saw a lot of shorts covering and we also saw a lot of buyers stepping in, defending their positions as the market attempted to bounce. And the question is, why did this happen the way it did? What caused this shift? And what's going on with the technicals now? Now, I first want to mention that we have some interesting stuff going on for tomorrow. As a reminder, we have initial jobless claims coming out one hour before the market opens. And then we also have a bunch of Fed speakers later on. So first, we have initial jobless claims. We want this to be around 210,000. Once again, one hour before the market opens at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Then at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, we have Mester from the Fed giving a speech. Then we have Barkin giving a speech at 11.30 a.m. At noon, we have Dally from the Fed. And then we have Barr from the Fed at 12.15 p.m. Eastern Time. So we have a bunch of Fed speakers all giving their speeches throughout the day tomorrow. Make sure you're ready for this in case this causes more volatility. And be prepared for some shocks here and there. Now, when it comes to Tesla, there's this news coming out right here about how Tesla could be building what's called a gigawatter loop, which looks pretty, pretty interesting. Now, this is once again not 100% uh, uh, confirmed yet, but once again, in Texas, Tesla's maybe planning on building a gigawatter loop, which could be a very, very big project for them, which could be very ambitious and very, very interesting. Now, this could be very, very good for many different projects out there, which include the production of battery cells and new mining materials. Tesla's also working on a new campus that they could be essentially building, and they could be basically turning an entire campus for their, their headquarters over there to be relocated near this Colorado River development. So that's one possibility. They didn't really go into the full details about it just yet, but this could be something very, very big for them. This could, this could also be a very, very good uh, proposed energy development sensor for them. So this could be very cool too. And we'll have to see if anything else happens. Now they could be trying to take over and utilize hydropower or hydroelectric power, which is one of the oldest and largest sources of re renewable energy. They could be doing this, but we'll have to wait and see if anything else ends up coming out. We'll wait and see how this goes. But this is some big news for Tesla if this does end up coming out. On top of this, I did talk about how Australians uh, are buying a lot more Teslas than before. We saw about 25,000 sold for the year. I did talk more about the details in my previous video, but I just wanted to mention it again. That's part of why Tesla performed well. Another reason why Tesla was doing well is because of what we're seeing in the short data. So uh, Troost Securities is saying you should hold on to your Tesla shares, which is good. Price price ratio is going up as Tesla's outperforming the market, which is another bullish signal. Thursdays tend to be green about 48% of the time, and we tend to see some changes in volatility here and there. Uh, we tend to see more green during the 11 o'clock a.m. period and also at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And finally, the shorting went up on Tesla like crazy. We saw 46 million Tesla shares shorted on Monday alone. Shorts were piling to Tesla trying to smack it down. And if anything, this led to another short squeeze as many of these shorts got humbled. I'm going to break down exactly why that was and something that happened on the charts that was very tricky. Now, also, the volume was 129 million. That's well above average. So it's a slight improvement for the markets. Now, with yields starting to drop, the market is starting to recover a bit. But let's break down something on Tesla. Let's go back to yesterday. Let's talk about how this chart was looking going into yesterday. If we go back like this, you will see that this is what Tesla looked like, right? If you look at this chart, you would say right off the bat that this is looking kind of bearish because of this head and shoulders. And you want to be open minded nonetheless. If Tesla had broken this, this would turn a lot more bearish. This like support right here, we'd have to break above this white trend line right here to turn bullish and make our way back up to like this 250 area. Now, in my video from yesterday, I said we should see Tesla pop since we had bullish divergences developing. I was worried that we might see Tesla reject off here, maybe get very close to doing so because we had this re resistance, right? And the market was quite bearish looking yesterday. But I did warn you all that the market should bounce at least for the first part of the day. And the market was very, very tricky. 
Now, what these you know institutions, these market makers and et cetera were doing was they wanted to trick a lot of people into shorting Tesla around these levels, especially yesterday as Tesla ended up sinking as we closed. And we had a very clear head and shoulders on the four hour time frame. So many people suspected Tesla was going to tank. That was it for Tesla. And what ended up happening? Instead, we ended up seeing Tesla explode to the upside. Look at this big, big, big run up to the upside. I was expecting a bounce on Tesla, but I wasn't expecting it to be this crazy yesterday, to be honest with you all. But after it happened, I did end up releasing a video where I told you all that if Tesla continued to break out, we had some key levels. I released a video when Tesla was at 256, around this level right here, when it was very close to this resistance. And I told you all, if we break above 257.5, we're going to be watching 258, 260, and then we have potential to go all the way up to almost 262. I called that out very early on during the day. And if you guys followed that video, you could have made crazy money if you just kept on holding on and you just kept on reading the charts. Not that I'm giving any financial advice or anything. I'm just calling it out. So yes, I mean, you know, there were crazy moves to the upside. Tesla upper from the market. And this was very tricky. There's a lot of trickery associated with this chart, but it's okay now because now things are looking a bit more clear and Tesla looks like it's not done pumping in my honest opinion. So now let's break down a couple of things I just wanted to mention. So on Tesla, we're looking a bit more bullish now. We finally got this breakout and it was very tricky, but it ended up playing out quite nicely. So on the four hour chart, you will notice that we have an inverse head and shoulders now. We were talking about this previously. It was looking a lot weaker yesterday, but now it just got this confirmation. And the thing is, we have a bullish looking four hour time frame as Tesla is trying to break out. And we have an unfilled gap on the daily time frame at 262, which tells me Tesla has more upside. Now, in the morning tomorrow, there's a possibility that Tesla retests 260, maybe a little bit lower than that, then it starts bouncing and we start pushing for 262.5. And if Tesla breaks that, I see 265 quite easily coming. Above that, 270 to 273 is going to be on the table for the full measured move. We're also very close to a bullish cross on the PPO, so the odds do favor more upside and Tesla pushing towards 270 if we could try to break 262.5 and 265. Those are two resistance levels to be watching for. If we are bearish on Tesla, you want to be watching 260 as support, 258, 257.5, and 255. So in case that does happen, right, you, want, you always want to be open-minded because this market is just full of trickery. They try to trick people in so many crazy ways. And I can't always promise I'm going to be correct when it comes to you know my analysis because you know the market is just insane, guys. Nobody, no matter how intelligent they are, can predict what the market is going to do every single day. But the best thing we can do is be prepared for anything and just to be open-minded. But, but what I'm going to tell you is that based off this daily candle that looks very strong on Tesla, the crazy volume we got today, the buying pressure, and the fact that there were so many shorts right here piling into Tesla, there's a good chance that we're going to see a short squeeze and Tesla should continue pushing and the odds do favor more upside. So I'm leaning more in that direction right now for this gap to get filled at 262.5. And for more potential upside as Tesla still looks very strong. So it looks like Tesla's gonna be trying to continue to go up. And we're gonna we're gonna be watching this thing try to break 262 and potentially even higher levels in the mid 260s. They all seem very, very possible and very likely in my opinion. Now to add on to this, I just want to mention that uh, you know, we could see Tesla be approaching these higher levels up here, 265, if 262.5 breaks, then we're going to be watching this imbalance towards this 267.5 to 270 area coming next. Uh, I do believe Tesla can approach that, so it's going to be worth mentioning if we do end up getting the breakout. So make sure you're prepared for that. Make sure you're open-minded nonetheless. But for now, let's not focus on 268 or any of these high levels, which is where we have this resistance. We're going to be focusing more on if Tesla could try to break and hold 262.5. If it does so, it's going to remain more bullish. Now, what else is worth noting that's pretty interesting for the market is the market came down during the pre-market. It was looking kind of weak, but then we got a bounce as I was expecting. And instead of rejecting off this, we ended up seeing the market hold up. So we didn't get that much of a rejection. We did initially reject off resistance, but then the market tried to hold up and we closed just at resistance right here. So if you're watching my previous videos, you will know that I had this green line drawn out, which is where we have our supports on SPY, historical supports. Then we also have this channel, which is where we have this, hold on, let's show this first. We have this head and shoulders on SPY. Um, we have this channel that's showing us how we're dropping so far, right? So with this channel, we have a confluence of resistance, which is going to be around this 424 zone. We're just barely at it. If we're bearish tomorrow, we want to see it reject off this and start sinking towards 422. If we're bullish, you want to see it break above this. We're just at resistance right here. We're going to be watching for it to get a back test and it to test 
426.5 to potentially 428. What seems more likely looking at this chart? Well, looking at SPY right now, we're starting to turn a bit more bullish because uh, first off, we're getting a bullish crossover on the PPO and we have a possible uh, nice accumulation phase with the bullish divergence breakout, which tells me there could be more upside. On the daily chart, it's not looking as strong just yet, but we're, we got above the 200 EMA. So it does favor the bulls a little bit more, but I'm just going to be open-minded and watch the test first just for confirmation. But we're going to be watching this test very, very soon to see how it does. I'm leaning a bit more in favor of the bulls, but just to be safe, let's watch it for confirmation. Same thing is going to be said about the QQQ. The QQQ has a potential cup and handle that could be forming, and we're going to be watching this breakout area. So we have a possible cup and then a handle that possibly could be forming. If we're bullish, you want to see it break 362. If it gets above that, it could go flying up towards the mid 360s. If we're bearish tomorrow, you're going to be watching for a rejection very close to 362. And we're going to be watching this thing come back down to 3, 358 then 356. Now it looks a bit more bullish thanks to the cup and handle, but watch for this confirmation first just to see if the QQQ could get that break. I'm leaning a bit more in that direction thanks to Tesla, so we'll have to wait and see. NVIDIA looks a bit more bullish as well because something new developed on the chart. NVIDIA has the support right here. The white trend line is acting as support, but we also have an inverse head and shoulders that has developed. If we're bearish, you want to see it break below this trend line below 435. If we're bullish, you want to see it break above 442 and hold that. If it manages to do so, this thing could be pushing for 445 and potentially even 450. What is more likely in my opinion? What do I think is more likely to happen? The answer is we have a potential inverse head and shoulders developing on it and the odds do favor some upside. We could get a back test of this like 437 area first before it tries to break out and start pushing towards this 450 area. So watch it very carefully to see which way it breaks as you want to be open-minded nonetheless. But I'm leaning a bit more bullish and I think that 445 should be tested as it's more probable. All right, so I hope that's clear, guys. I'm not calling both sides. I'm telling you what the bullish and bearish cases are, and I'm telling you what I think is a bit more likely, but you always want to be watching just to be safe because, like I said before, guys, nobody could always predict the markets perfectly. And nobody could promise anything about the markets, but I always want to just tell you what's more likely and what TA is suggesting for tomorrow. Apple looks a bit more bullish based off technicals, so let's watch these levels carefully. On Apple, we have a potential like double bottom like formation has developed. Also kind of looks like a cup and handle as well if you want to let go of that route. And Apple's holding up quite decently. So if we're bullish, you want to see it break 174. If we break and hold 174, I could see this thing going for the gap resistance or gap fill at 175 to 176. If we're bearish, you want to see Apple break below 172 because this is where we have this falling wedge. And if we get back below the falling wedge, this thing is going to be sinking towards 170. What is more likely? I would say the upside is looking a bit more probable thanks to the, in, the uh, cup and handle and also because of the fact that we closed above this resistance right here, which is a sign of strength. If Apple could break 174, I would lean more bullish, but we need to see confirmation first for any trend change. But as of right now, I am leaning a bit more in that direction by looking at the current technicals. So watch the levels very carefully. Now I'm just going to quickly and very briefly go over just a couple of other tickers. I'm going to try to be kind of quick with this, by the way. The four hours looking a bit more bullish on the IWM. So watch for this thing trying to push up towards 173. Uh, it is looking like it wants to curl after we got this bullish divergence. So watch that very carefully. For something else like Microsoft, we have a potential cup and handle that's also developing. If we break below 316.5, we're going to turn more bearish. If we break above 321, we're going to be pushing for 324 more, most likely. We have a cup and handle that's forming, so the odds do favor this thing trying to push up for 322.5 and possibly 324. So I'm leaning more in that direction, but always be open-minded nonetheless. Just know I'm leaning a bit more in that direction. Now, AMD, if we're bearish, you want to see it come back down to 101.74. If you're bullish, you want to see it break the 200 EMA and then push above this resistance. What looks more likely is we have an inverse head and shoulders, right? This is looking more bullish to me. It looks like it wants to break out of this 200 EMA as we have three rejections, but this time it's trying to break out. And we have a bullish cross in the PPO with a bullish looking wedge right here. So with the bullish wedge and everything developing, I could see 109 plus if we break 105 and I am leaning a bit more in that direction, but watch it just to be safe. Netflix got a very, very flat looking trend right here. It is trying to base right here. So it looks like if it gets above 377.5, it could be pushing for 380. If it breaks below 375, it could be watching for 372. I'm leaning in direction of it testing 375, then bouncing and pushing towards 378. 
And I, I think it's more probable it's going to try to see some upside. We look at the VIX, okay? The VIX has a potential bearish divergence as it's starting to break to the downside. So we're going to be watching this 17.72 uh, area as support. It looks like it may cool off towards that and then eventually break a little bit lower before it tries to bounce. So that tells me there could be a little bit more upside for the markets. The dollar index is looking the same. I mean, we have a bearish divergence on the dollar, which tells me that the market, uh, with this potentially cooling off a bit, it could test 106.38, which is the 50 EMA. And we have a bearish cross on the PPO, which tells me the stock market may pump a little bit more as the dollar continues to drop. Coinbase, we were talking about this thing testing 69, then bouncing. Instead, we get 70.5, and then we try to bounce. So there's a possibility that you know this thing drops a little bit towards this area, and then it tries to bounce. Or it could bounce from here off the four hour. It really depends on different factors. I would say that the full measure move may not be done yet. I'm not sure if it's done or not. If 70 is the bottom, we, if it gets above like 74, then that's going to tell us that it's getting ready to bounce, start pushing for 75 plus. Uh, but it all depends on the test. If we reject off that, then it could come back down to 72. My guts tells me that this thing is going to retest 72, then try to bounce again and try to get back to 74.86. But we need to see this thing hold above that first to turn bullish. For Google, it looks more bullish. This thing got a breakout today. Uh, we have a nice inverse on shoulders for the full measured move. It could be pushing towards this 140 area. But before we talk about that, uh, 138 could be coming first, so watch that very carefully. The 10-year treasury yield is continuing to drop, which is once again a bullish signal for the markets as the PPO is about to get a crossover, so that's worth mentioning. Amazon is looking a bit more bullish. If this thing continues to break from this resistance, I think that 128.8 is a real possibility, and it, it is once again trying to form this cup and handle, so there's a possibility of 128 to be tested. If we're bearish, you want to see it break below 126.5. If that breaks, then it could be sinking towards 125. My guts tells me it's, it's going to test the 50 really soon for 128. Meta also looks a bit more bullish. You can see this because it's, uh, it's it's kind of trading sideways a bit, but it's trying to break out at the same time. So we're going to be watching this test of 309 to 310 and see if Meta could break that or not. But we have a bullish cross on the PPO, which tells me there's a little bit more upside coming for 310 very soon. So anyways, guys, I'm very open-minded to any possibility, but I'm leaning a bit more bullish on Tesla looking at the current trend, looking at the daily candle, and looking at these different factors. All right, so I hope that's as clear as possible. I am sorry, but I don't really have to be sorry when I say this, but I'm going to just say it. I'm sorry. I can't always predict the market perfectly. Sometimes unexpected things can happen, just like what I just showed you on TradingView in the very beginning. But I do my best to give you guys an unbiased analysis, and I show you guys, I'm going to try to show you guys both sides and then what's more likely anyways, in my opinion, just to try to give you guys as much of a sufficient analysis as possible. So I am anticipating more upside for Tesla, looking at the current trend. So watch it very carefully, and we will see where it goes from there. But until then, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. I appreciate every single one of you. Tesla to the moon because the long term is very bright. And peace.